are looking to break off here against Callum Singleton. It's an absolute pleasure and a joy to be joined by a two-time world champion himself and a good friend of mine, Chris Melling. And Chris, how do you see this match going? Cheers, Tony. Yeah, it's um, contrasting styles, really. Obviously, Yannick is quite well known for taking his time and looking at all options, where Callum's a quick player. But it's going to be an interesting match, really. Like you say, Yannick wearing glasses for the first time. And uh, I've never seen him wearing them, that's for sure, even even walking around the hotel. But he's obviously been practising and uh, shouldn't make too much difference, I wouldn't have thought. Well, he said to me, he said he's had him two weeks. So... I, 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 apparently he, gets, he can get free laser treatment when he's 50 in France according to the, fr the, the French government or whatever that does it but he's, um, he says until then he's got to pay for his treatment, treatment or he has to wear the glasses so he said I'm choosing to wear the glasses I've tried them for two weeks he said I, I feel like I can. the pockets look a bit bigger but we're going to find out aren't we yeah and he couldn't have asked for much better break there the, the Reds are lovely it doesn't have too much to do with the cue ball just Nice little stop shot there. I think he didn't like to land a little bit lower than that so he could pot the plant and go up the table for the red over the pocket for me. Well, when I played back in the earlier 2000s and Yannick was playing then for France and he was never the fastest player in the world and it was a little bit longer you, you get to, to take a shot than you do now in the Ultimate Pro Series as it's 45 seconds here, it used to be a minute, but he used to use his full minute back then, didn't he? Yeah, he loved to take his time, and I don't know whether that were, you know, to play mental games on his opponent or, you know, but knowing, knowing the way I know Yannick, it, it, it isn't something that he'd do to gain a big advantage, but that's not his greatest shot there. He needed to be on the, the right-hand side of this red into the corner pocket, therefore the cue ball would just come out to the left and leave a perfect angle. He's going to have to either softly stun into the red or stun between the gap and the red and the yellow I think for me he's got to stun into the red softly yeah, it's a tricky little shot this is he'd love to be dead straight on this there's no way he could really play the other one into the center and kick into the yellow because you would get a cue ball far enough to get back up for the other red so he's going to play the shot you suggested Chris but it's tricky Nicely played there, but again, as he got the right angle, it looks a bit straight to me. If he has to pull back, he's going to have to pull back into the gap between the black and those two yellows, which is going to be landing on the sixpence. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky because this table is so responsive that, you know, obviously these players aren't really used to this table. It's brand new cloth. Oh, he's played a great shot there. He had a tiny bit of angle. He, he forced the left-hand side onto the cue ball there just to pull it over, and he's played a very good shot. Just a matter of guiding this last red in and bringing the cue ball back. I mean, will he come back through the gap or will he go around the back of it, Chris? And yeah, off the rail. I think he has to play for the gap and ju just play to cannon the yellow, really. As long as you hit it with a little bit of pace, it can't go wrong. Well, this is looking like the perfect start for Yannick Bofis. He sprang straight out of the trap. And for a man that says he hasn't played a competitive match since June. He's firing on all cylinders right now. Right, and I think that's certainly the best way to, to look at it. And there we see the new smart rack being used for the first time. Yes, quite an interesting little contraption. Seems to work well. I think it's probably better than it, the, the triangle with, with obviously the bottom piece because I, I don't think you, I think you can get the balls tighter with this sort of rack. Yeah, and the other thing is it's not wooden, so it, the wood won't bend in heat. You know, so um, you can get it very tight. Well, I saw them on sale at the old Ultimate Pool shop, and they're magnetic. You can put them together. So I mean, you could like, you could take your own rack with you everywhere you go, could you? Yeah, it's a great idea. And we see Callum there using the cut break. As anybody will know, I am not a fan of the cut break. That's two of us, Chris. I hate the cut break. Every time I've tried to, I mean. This is a man that knows how to play the cut break, and obviously there are plenty of professionals doing it. Every time I've tried that, no matter how hard or soft I've hit it, I've put the white off the table. I just have no control whatsoever. Yeah, I do understand there is a skill to it, but for me, it's just... I think it's an easy way out to break. I think you should be made to hit the front ball head-on. 
Wow. You've got to be not allowed to use a cover. Is that you honestly saying that? Yeah, because if you hit the second ball down, the only way it goes in off is it's a cue ball comes off the side cushion and goes in the middle. And when you have to hit the ball's head on, if you don't hit the centre of the object ball, the cue ball will go towards the centre pockets. Nice little cannon there by Callum. A little bit fortunate. I mean, he has tied the red up at the top end of the table, but it shouldn't really cause a big issue. Well, I must admit, he's going to need some pretty far shooting, I was going to say, to, to get out there, and he's not even attempted it. He's played a safety there and put the eight ball as well at the top in that little cluster. So plenty of work to do now for Yannick. There is, and I don't think it's to his advantage to be playing tactically against somebody like Yannick. He's been around a long, long time. And I've not really seen Callum's tactical game. Uh, obviously, with these rules that we do play, you don't see many tactical frames, but from what I do know about Yannick, he's, he's very good in the tactical department. Well, what I know of Yannick, and obviously I've known him many years as well, he's a very studious person. So he'll analyse everything. He's a great thinker. And like you said before, I wouldn't want to go into a tactical battle with Yannick because, for me, there's only one winner. Yeah, I, to I totally agree there, Tony. I mean, Callum's played a, a sensible shot there. There'll be a lot of people at home thinking, well, why hasn't he put that red over the pocket? And the reason he hasn't put the red over the pocket is because then Yannick would just flick off one of the yellows and pot the red over the pocket, which is obviously not to his advantage. He's going to try and clip off this yellow and pot his red, I, th I believe. Yeah, but a ball over the pockets is, is not an advantage thing, advantageous thing to have because you're just gonna, your opponent's going to play the loss of turn shot on you and just leave you stuck there in the jaws. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of kind of chess thinking. You know, thinking what your opponent's going to do before you do it. I was very surprised, though, that Yannick didn't try and pot his red. Again, here, I would play the yellow onto the red into the top left-hand corner and stick the cue ball up the table. So I guess you'd be looking to try and knock your opponent's reds away now, leaving him with the, with the, the rough one at the top of the table. Or kind of forcing him to go for it when he doesn't want to as well, isn't it? Yeah, and there you see a clever shot there from Yannick. He's pushed that yellow at the top end of the table. He can actually play that into the red and pot the ball over the top corner pocket. Well, I will be very, very surprised now if Yannick doesn't try and pot his red over the pocket. He has to. I agree with you, Chris. It's a free shot for me. Yeah, ab absolutely correct. I think that's the only shot. He He's not going to do it. Well, he doesn't want to keep putting his balls, that's for sure. Well, not bad, but what has he really gained from that? Well, a player of Callum's quality, you know he's not going to give a foul here. Or he, can be, he can just come off the side rail and kick back. Has he that's a cushion? I was going to say, foul. I'll tell you what, he hasn't. It's a foul. Well, that's made me look a liar. Time running. Yeah, now surely he has to play a yellow onto red and pot his red over the pocket. Is Yannick looking, looking at potting the yellow and splitting the balls everywhere? And Well, I think he's got to do something now to progress the frame. So I think I might go for to, to pot and crash into them. He's got to be careful, though, because he needs the red to drop in. Otherwise, the yellow will stay there. He's been fortunate there, you know. Even though he's not perfect where the eight balls landed. It's just the, the problem with that is the, the black's in a tough position, but he's going to have to take the yellow that was you'd use to get on it as well first. Yeah, that's that's right, Tony. He's got to leave this yellow that he's going to... Well, he's going to play it now. For me, he pots the yellow off the red in the middle. I was just, I was just pointing at that to you there. That's the other option. But um, it wouldn't be everybody's option because... On a p level of potting, I mean, you will pull out some ridiculous shots. <laughs> You've done it against me back in the day, and, and you're still doing it now. So the mere mortal would, would look at thinking, well, I'll just play the sensible shot rather than, you know, the circus act. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the first shot Yannick's played, obviously, he's potted his own ball to develop the balls, but 
he's put himself in trouble straight away where I think the tactical frame he was playing he was in total control so just just playing another tactical shot really now he needs some luck and he has been quite fortunate because knocking the yellow where he's knocked it now he can use that and play it with top right hand spin and come in between the eight ball and the red to leave the eight ball for the same pocket where his last yellow's going. I don't know what he's playing to be on though, with playing that shot into the middle. Yeah, I'm not sure he, he knew what he was playing for to be honest. I think he was running out of clock and he's just <laughs> he's just thrown his arm at it really. I think it's just a case that he wasn't decided was he in his own mind. Yeah, it's very difficult with the shot clock because it's so quick. And that's, a, that's a real poor shot if he hasn't left an angle. I think he has a tiny angle and just run up and, and play the shot that you've said to go on the black. That's his only way of getting on the black. Yeah, he just wants to leave the cue ball just slightly past the red on the left-hand side of the table. That's just about perfect. Or is it? I think I he's a bit too much, actually. I, I, do you know what? I'd have been even tempted just to roll it in and play the cue ball through the gap of the two reds in the middle and play it with a load of right-hand side and go over there. Yeah, I mean, this shot here is... I mean, it's a tough shot on any table, but on this table, with the cloth being brand new, you know, this is his second favourite to get on the eight ball. It's not that he's going to have to play with that much pace to get the cue ball over, Chris. Or does he even try... There's a lunatic shot, which is to pot it, screw the cue ball right back on the bottom rail and off the side and back up there. And yeah. try and get on the top, but he's going with the top spin. But this, this would be an incredible shot if he gets on the black from here. Yeah, this is... Ultra difficult to get on the eight ball. Oh, what an effort. Well, I'll tell you what, that's one of the best shots I have ever seen. I'm not, you don't really, well, you know how hard that is, but that was a ridiculously hard shot to play. Yeah, because the table is so responsive. To actually play that shot and get where he's got from the angle he had, that is, well, the shot of the tournament so far, anyway. It's, only, it's been the only shot in the tournament. <laughs> Well, this tricky eight ball for a 2 new lead. What a finish from Yannick Pofis, my word. And the shot to get on the black. Yeah, that is a brilliant shot he's played there. I mean, for those people at home, you may play this in the club, but the, the, the cushions will play quite springy where on here. You see how much it's just slid there off that's the cushion. Just, that's an obscene shot from the Frenchman. Back to the cut break. That one was played with a bit more pace. And he's, Callum Singleton's been rewarded. Reds look very nice, Chris. Wow, look at them reds there. They are delightful. Well, I think if you were playing that frame, Chris, you'd be on the black by now, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd be somewhere near. It's a little bit tricky. If you can get on the red into the centre pocket early, the middle one of the five, let's say, that's his trickiest ball. And once he gets on that, then it's over. The thing is, it's how Callum's state of mind is because he's he's not had a real opening like this to win a frame. It, it, it'll be really wanted to make sure it is finish. Well, well, what he certainly needs to do here is get the gap. He has to get the gap. So really, he needs to leave the cue ball somewhere near, let's say, the blue spot on the snooker table. If he gets on that, he's absolutely perfect. That'll do. Yeah, you take that all day long. Would have loved to have been straight, so he could just pop the red in the top right corner, stop it dead, and he's, he's absolutely perfect. And See a couple of the players there looking on. Dylan Leary, the man on the left. He won the event in Daventry. I was fortunate enough to commentate on a couple of months ago. That was on the mini series. Yeah, nice shot there again by Callum. If he, if he can just cannon the yellow or drift past the yellow, he's absolutely perfect. I think he has got a little angle. Yeah, well he's made it a little tricky but shouldn't cause too many problems. Now he's got to stretch a little bit now and he's going over the top of this yellow but he desperately needs his frame. He's played that well. Yeah, and this is looking like 3-1. You wouldn't expect Callum to miss this one. This is a, a dangler. And in she goes. And a relieved Callum Singleton walks back to his chair, having chalked up his first frame on the board. 
but he still trails Janet Burfees three frames to one. But he'll feel a lot better now, Callum, won't he, after that? Oh, cut break again, well, straight Like in. I say, there are tickets available on ultimatepoolshop.com for that tournament in Brentwood in December. Back to the action here at Blackpool. Do you know, Tony, this could be me in my match. <laughs> I might start cutting them just, for, what, just for a wind-up. If I see you out there cutting, cutting breaks, I'm coming out there with boxing gloves on, mate, I'm telling you. Anyway, what an opportunity here, though, for Callum Singleton to finally level the match. If he's been behind all the way through. It was funny, Tony, you know, because uh, <laughs> about six months ago, I was doing some commentary in a studio work, and I was talking about the cut break. And I was saying, it's an absolute joke. Nobody should be using it. And everybody was like, yeah, you're right. And I went out there and started cut breaking on purpose just to wind everybody up. Well, you've always been a mischief maker, Chris, ever since I've known you. So why isn't it a surprise? Well, not only can you win on the table, you can also win off the table mentally. You know, I wouldn't ever do anything that's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't ever cheat or anything like that. But I don't think that's ever come into question f for you, Chris, or any of the players that play in this. They're all, all these tournaments are played in brilliant, you know, camaraderie and, Certainly and, and sportsmanship. So, you know, I've, I've never seen it. And I, d to be fair, it doesn't exist. But this is a big shot now for Singleton. No, that can't, surely. It's not. I think if that one had dropped in, there'd have been uproar. But it was a bit too pacey as well. Yeah, and is Yannick going to play the yellow onto the red? Well, it was a clearance where he went the wrong way. I mean, he could have played... The ball he's just played, he could have played four shots ago. Or three shots ago. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Time running. What on earth has he done there? The only concern here for Cameron Singleton is the black ball, but yes, Yannick Bofis. It's all going wrong at the moment. Well, why? Why is he playing the red in this pocket? Why not just play the red in the middle and just flick the eight? I totally agree. There's a couple of, there's a couple of different ways he could have gone there to go into the eight ball and move it out of the way. He just flicked the left-hand side of the eight ball. Yeah. It can't physically go wrong. I mean, it shouldn't go wrong now, but if this gives a little bounce... Oof, that's not his best shot. Oh, wow. How do you like these after missing the other one? Well, soft stun and hit it as soft as possible, giving it the best chance to drop. This is such a tough shot. And he's missed it, and that's a... What an opportunity that was to level the match. It's just the wrong shot, Tony. I know the clock's going and you're under pressure, I get that, you know, and it is hard because of the, the speed that you have to play at. But you've got to give yourself the best of opportunities. And that isn't Yannick's best shot. He's too straight. He's way too straight. Has he got a slight angle that he can force this with left-hand spin? Well, he's screwing it down the table. He doesn't want to go too far. That's pretty good. That's perfect, Chris. Or is it? Well, Will the yellow go past the black? I think the yellow definitely goes past the black. But... Do you play it now? I'd play it now while you're on it. I think you do, and I think you've got a cannon the left of the two yellows. Well, he's playing the plant. This effectively is match frame for, for Yannick, because if you look at the clock, he's definitely going to start running it down if he gets a 6-4 lead. Yeah, and he's been very lucky, you know, to get back to the table here. He's played that very well indeed. And there's Christophe Lambert. Fellow compatriot from France. The arena is full of French sophistication today, Chris. Yeah, and uh, he's, been, he's been very, very, very fortunate, is Yannick. But Callum's had his chance. If he can miss chances like he's missed there, especially the, the one where he had ball in hand at the end. I mean, granted you can miss the other one, I understand, but you shouldn't be missing no. the ball in hand there with three balls left. Well, that was his chance. Level the match at five each. You've only got three and a half minutes left on the clock. You think, well, you have a choice. If you're at the table, you can go game and try and win the match. You think, can I get over the line? Or do I just sit here now and take the six ball shootout and let, let's get on with it? Well, you know now that Yannick's going to take forever. Oh, he will. 
you know, he's, he's going to run the top down. Extension. I actually did it last week, you know, in uh, China. Um, there was like three minutes left, but over there you get 45 seconds shot. Okay. Um, so I, I had, I potted one on the break. I was one frame in front. Uh, like I said, three minutes left, so I just took forever, every shot. Then I took my extension with a ball hanging over the pocket. And the referee actually turned <laughs> around to me and says, you can't do that. I said, well, I didn't make the rules up. I that said, you right. guys made the rules up. You know, I'm, in t I'm sticking by the rules. I'm doing nothing wrong. And, and then the match that I actually, one of the matches I actually lost, the Chinese guy did it to me, and nobody said a word to him. And I just thought, well, everybody in the building's going to do it. They say, absolutely, of course they are. You know, you're sticking by the rules. You're not doing anything wrong. Nice to know you're making friends in China, anyway, Chris. Yeah, I've got no enemies. <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> no, I don't think you have, Chris. You're not a bad lad. Anyway, here we go. Somebody needs to tell you that the cl clock's not running yet. He's trying to run it down now. <laughs> He's got to wait for him to break. Wouldn't this be amazing now if he breaks and doesn't pop one? Well, that was oh, the eight ball goes in and the cue ball goes in. Can you imagine that? Playing devil's advocate now, aren't you, Chris? Yeah, it happened to me last week in the oh. Players' Championship. First break, bang, eight ball in, cue ball in. Wow. Well, we don't get any golden breaks in this tournament. Or any golden ducks, for that matter. None of that. Yeah, well, we can't do that, then. No, that's that's out your repertoire for the week. That's that break again. Oh, great break, great, great break, and this match is over. Well, he's going to take the yellows now, and he's going to dangle these these in at maximum time. Like you said, he's going to use his extension, and there really is no way back now for Callum Singleton. Oh, what's he played? Oh what has he word. played there? That is so obvious that the cue ball's going there when you play that shot with top. And he's again, once again, he's been lucky. Yeah, he's because got the reds away are tough. with a, oh. The reds are tough as well. They and, are. and I tell you what, he could be going in off here if he tries to pop this in the middle. Just, you just want to hit it, don't you? That's it. Well, he's give Callum a chance, you know. Can he? Can the red sneak past? Well, you can't play that, Callum. No. He's just, eating, that. he's just eating more time away from himself. Well, he's just giving Yannick the chance to pot his yellow and then use another 15, 20 seconds. Absolutely. Then pot another one and do the same. Mm, very surprised at what uh, Callum played there. I think his, uh, his head's a little mashed with the frame before. Well, I think Yannick's now... He's very confident that he's going through to the next round. He's got to smash this 100 mile an hour and up, break everything open and hope one goes in. He's got no choice, really. Well, he's got to battle on, but he needs to win this frame at quick, smart fashion, and it's not happening. Yeah, and you'd like to think that Yannick's probably going to have... He's well, going to play a little safety here. Well, why on earth is Yannick not taking his four yellows out and taking forever on each one? I, I, I can't agree with that, though, Tony. I think I don't think he's that bothered now. He's six four up. We're talking one minute forty odd seconds. It's I just don't see. I mean, yes, the reds are now open. What does Janet do now? He, he now pots as many yellows as he can. Yeah, he's going to use a minute and fifteen seconds. Next next five shots he plays, unless he pots this and goes in off like he nearly did a minute ago. Is that a go for you? Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's definitely taking it. I mean, Callum's going to have literally 10 seconds in the last rack to run out if he wins the next rack. Well, it's just a matter now of dotting the I's and crossing the T's for Yannick Bofis. He is going to be going through to the next round. I think we're confident now in that. This yellow will go in. Which will eat another 15 seconds up. Yeah, and if he pots this and cannons right between... Well, if he cannons the right of the two reds at the top end of the table, he'll push that yellow towards the corner. Yeah. Doesn't need to hit this hard. Well, the game's really been a story of little bits of fortune. There you go. Wow. Perfect. For Yannick Bofis, a couple of little chances that Callum should have maybe wrapped up, but he... Has Yannick been good good value? He's played some tremendous shots, especially in that, that one in the was it the second frame when he got on the black? That was brilliant. I think I think Yannick deserves to win. But yeah. I also think Callum's missed some chances too. Yeah. 
Well, he's not bothered with the clock now. He's going to win it straight out. This for a 7-4 win. In it goes. And Yannick Bothfi shakes hands there with Callum Singleton. And it's the Frenchman that goes through to the next round. And he will be happy with that. Are we, are we playing yellows now? Play the one at the bottom first. Try and stand up to the near the bulk line, I think. Stand Just pass them in the pocket for the two that go into the top left. If he can see the, the yellow under the black spot, that is. I think he can. It's, it's just a little bit thinner than it looks on our screen. Yeah, he wasn't happy with it. Could just tell, wasn't it? Shake of the head, wasn't thrilled with what he had to play there. No. It's been a bit fortunate there. Tied the yellow up and... Well, Gareth can see this to the left centre, but this is a tougher chance because of where the yellow that Phil's missed has gone. Should be alright. If he can just roll, if he's straight enough on this, the yellow to go past the red, just push it through, leave an angle on the one in the middle, and then he can run down for the yellow by the black, or if he's not happy about it, play a little cannon. If he thinks it's too tight to land on. Stroke. Yeah, I think this is where, for, for Gareth, I think one of the big things is he's such a big practiser. He puts so much out, so many hours in, but of course, chopping and changing between games now as he is, he can't put commit the time he'd like to to be prepared. And he'll probably feel like a little bit undercooked in terms of his being sharp with his positional play. Yeah. And th when you need to be as pinpoint as he was trying to be here, that might be in the back of his mind. That was the main thing that I noticed. Um on Monday, my positional play was just terrible, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you can't put the cube where you want to, it yeah. makes this game difficult. It was a real struggle. Just because of natural angles are completely different with the Chinese balls to, to these balls. Keep trying to make angles that you think are there, but they're not. This time he looks like he's landed perfect just short of the straight allows him to get across to the right hand side I think this is the sort of shot where we'll we'll know if he's been practicing eight ball since China because if he oh yeah it's perfect well that was a natural angle I thought he had to stun that to be honest yeah if he had to stun <coughs> past the other side of the red it could have been an issue Still hampered, it's still a little bit awkward. Oh dear. I think he might be right, so I think he's pretty much dead straight, is he? Is it? It's not much of a gap. No, but. Excellent eight ball from Gareth Potts. Yeah, Brian really did play well that weekend, didn't he? He really did. Eight ball will come back up, but he's made other balls, so he'll stay on the table. What a break that is. Yeah, it was the best we've seen from, from Brian since Ultimate Ball began. He's really struggled for form and confidence and has eased into his weekend, but once he got going, he played some really good ball. Yeah. Yeah, very... <laughs> Very unlucky for him to not to qualify in the end. Of Liam had a golden break in the decider, didn't he? Golden break in yeah. the deciding frame of the deciding set. Yeah, it was a tough one, but I think everyone really does enjoy Brian's company and likes mm. to see Brian go well, and it's been tough for him, but nice to see him find some form. Also received an award just to... 
because he, uh, he had the quickest ever six red shootout in the Players' Championship last year. So Ultima Paul, Paul thought they'd remember that with a trophy for him, which he got at the, the Players' Championship a few oh, weeks right. ago. Uh, on the same weekend as he set the record for the slowest or the longest ever frame of Paul with Ultima Paul at 22 minutes and change with Josh Kane. It's quite, which was quite amusing. Not for Josh, of course, who went on to lose that frame and match. Big visit to the table then for Phil Parkin. Get going in this match. Yeah, such an important frame this for Phil. I think he might just be alright if he can just drop the one in the middle and leave himself just off straight for the yellow, but... Must be fine. Just come around to have a look at the angle. Yeah, big visit for Phil. This. <coughs> Strikes everything with authority, doesn't he? Even, even little. Simple shots like that, he punches it in. Yeah, he loves to get through the ball, doesn't he? You don't see him take, play too many sort of slow touch shots. It's all about positivity and driving through that ball. Be interesting to see how Jack plays this week because he was away for a month, I think. Yeah, yeah, he did Vietnam, didn't he, before yeah. China? Yeah, obviously had a great win out there. Fair play to him. Yeah, big challenges, I think, for a lot of pool players these days, how to manage the schedules and commitments and, yeah. and the mixing of the games. Not easy to do. So Gareth makes another ball off his break. Top left-hand corner, those two together, is the challenge. Yeah, there's a tricky little layout if he's... Um, again, reds. Just looking to just be straight enough on this red to the top left so we can follow it through and play a cannon, I think. I think this is tight. Oh, just playing safety. Leaving an angle. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, that's that's that's, that's good. the right shot. I just didn't see it. To be fair, yeah, just cut this one in the middle. Try and flick the yellow, maybe, or just off the side round, can in the red. Oh, great shot! Beautifully played. Worked out that little problem at the top really nicely. That one he dropped into the top left that you saw he used complete right hand side of the pocket. It was very tight. Excellent shot back to back to get to this point. Oh, that's a great shot as well. Lovely, lovely finish. This is this will be if he can take these next three. Worked it out real well. It's a little bit short. They play the cannon on the yellow here, just to kill the cue ball, and has good perfection. Yeah, very nicely done for Gareth Potts. Another lovely visit to the table for Gareth, who is very much in full flow now. He's dealt with the last couple. Oh, back-to-back -back break finishes, but he will not have a third. And that is exactly what Phil Parkin was hoping for, an opportunity here to step in. Yep. Ideal for Phil. He's got a nice chance. He just needs to play a little cannon on the yellow, I think. This this really is a, a no more mistakes situation for Phil though, I think. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Yeah, 
yeah, in your own mind, if you feel parking here, you've got to turn a fouled break, a very unfortunate foul break from Gareth, into a two-frame burst to make it 4-4. Four, four. Just as I'm saying, no more mistakes from Phil. He's played a terrible shot. It feels like a huge moment in this match all of a sudden. Extension call. Yeah, just got into the white a little bit too much there. and um, don't know what he's looking at here. Oh, he might be able to swerve it. That's what he's looking at. And he's yeah he's he's had a he's had a result there. I don't think he'll be too disappointed. No, no. He, all he was hoping for was sight of a ball down the table because he knew he couldn't avoid the Reds. Mm. I think he's looking to dig this down and properly cue it. But if I was him, I'd just play it with just top spin and try and leave the yellow in the middle bag. Let's just concentrate. Oh, what a shot there! He's just struck <laughs> like, like a dream. I, th I think more of the natural shot was just playing it with top and sort of coming behind the yellow for the middle bag would have been my choice but what a shot that was yeah it's going to be a great out create a problem solve the problem that bit of queuing down the cushion it may look nothing on the screen but the way he's queued that barely touched it perfect position great pot oh another huge break from Gareth Not a nice layout though. He will be taking reds. I'm not he might just pop pop one or two and, and play a safety to be honest with you. Tell you what, the referees have to be on their guard when Gareth's breaking like that. <laughs> they come back so quickly towards that queue which is so far down the table. Of course there's no doubt that if if it ever did hit the queue, Gareth would obviously call it, but very powerful. Yeah, I think maybe just pop this one. Try and free up that red. Oh, which he's missed the cannon. I was going to say, and then just play some sort of snooker down the bottom or safety. But, um, missed the cannon, that's not ideal. Where the yellows are, he's just going to bring his red out, say, have a go. Very tough on yellows. Well, yeah, I don't think Phil, even Phil will go for the finish here. No, but how do you mess it up? How do you, how do you keep Gareth from having a chance to go? It's very difficult. I mean, he, the the two red, the yellows that he's closest to. I think he's just gonna have to stun the white off and try and push the black over towards. Oh, we'll do that. What? Well, that's a great shot. Yeah, that's brilliant. Loss of turn, hasn't left a, an open ball on for Gareth. That's fantastic. Really well worked out for Phil Parkin. I'm not seeing the shot, Simon. That's worrying for me. I'm playing <laughs> in a few hours. <laughs> Very different when you're out there. I've got some sort of double or I think that red by the blue spot on the snooker table is in the way yeah I do think it is blocked this time just a containing shot is there enough of the yellow nearest the top left hand corner showing it's tight overhead tells us it doesn't look anywhere near on but they've both had a very good look and Gareth's look when he walked away from the table wasn't convincing, but I'm pretty sure this is all good. I mean, he can cut the one he's closest to across the table, but he's just relying on so much, so much luck to get on anything. But well, 
don't know why he's done that. I don't know what he's expecting to have left himself. Um, yeah, I think maybe if he'd have played it with a load of top top right or something, he maybe could have got something to to happen, but I don't see what he's got here now. Travels close. It's a great result. It's a very, very good result. It's put Gareth in a world of trouble here. I don't know if that's a great shot or very lucky there, Simon. I'm not well, sure. that's why I'm saying great yeah. result. <laughs> <laughs> Answers on a postcard there. If he has tried to do that, it's brilliant. It really is. You have to assume he, he was trying to do that as well because he wasn't trying to make the treble. I know he was close to, but it, I don't think that was ever in his mind. It's a fa fascinating little tactical exchange here. He's up about five minutes already. Yeah, I think Phil can play the plant here, can he? Oh, no, is he playing safe? And they do go for the plant. He just about got far enough to stop Gareth from having a really open chance that yellow stops a turn less then it's fairly routine for Gareth I can tell you whilst this is going on that Dan Eaton Lees has made it a deciding frame against Gary Clark I think Gareth's got to pop this red and play the loss of turn shot top right leave him on nothing Yeah, just play lots of turn here. There's a loss of turn. Has he got the cue ball as he wanted? I think he's okay. Yeah, he's pretty good. Not sure it's exactly where he was trying to get the cue ball, but he'll take it. These tactical exchange are why I really love this rule set. It's really progressive, balls are still going in. And that could be that for Phil Parkin in this match and in Pro Series 7. I know that looks a bit careless, but fair play to him. I think that was the right shot there. I know it looks looks awful, but um, he was running out of time and yeah. wasn't really going to leave. You know, whatever he played was going to leave Gareth a chance. So I like I like the fact that he's going for that. Yeah, and if he hits the yellow quarter ball, he pots it, and he's perfect on the next two balls. Yeah, and he he's wins the frame off it. So he, yeah, it looks terrible, but it wasn't far from it. The only thing they'll be annoyed is that he missed the, the yellow by a reasonable margin. Would have expected to get closer than that. But it looks like it's going to cost him in this match. He'll be back to do it all again in Pro Series 8, of course. But for Pro Series 7, Phil Parkins' race could be run. Here's Gareth Potts. It gets the job done. A fantastic match to watch. Both players played really good stuff out there, but it is the full times world champion that gets us over the line. Tom, thank you very much for your company. Best of luck when we see you out there yourself later on. And we will see you again very shortly as well. I'm going to jump out into the arena and try and get a few words with Gareth. And of course, we've got one more match coming here on this table. So I was described saying Chris Mellon is a player that plays with controlled aggression. You know, and a, and a great shot maker as well. Yeah. And things that look impossible, Chris can pull them out. Yeah, definitely. But I think this man has also got a knack for that as well. I think one thing that you know, probably he probably Craig probably doesn't break as big as some of the you know the big breakers, um, but he's still very controlled. And yeah. you know, and obviously the tables are that quick. 
you know, you can get away with not having a massive break like a Tom Cousins, really, or Jack. No, that's really. right. I think it's deceptive that you look like somebody's hit the break easily, but they're actually, they actually generate power in a different way as they, as they strike. It's a little bit maybe like golfers, you know, you see a golfer with a slow golf swing, you don't think they hit the ball quite so far, and they've hit it like, 400 yards, and you think, wow. Yeah. Right off the yellow first shot. I can't believe it's hung. He's, he's well, caught Matt it. He's, he's caught it a touch too thick, hasn't he? He did. But he's still, still expected to go. Well, Matt Cook will be delighted with this opportunity. It's a great chance this is to go 2 0 off. So you get these sort of matches in it. A player like Craig Wooding, if he gets on a roll, it's, it, it's hard to stop, and it's like a steamroller that just keeps going, chugging on. Well, I just can't believe this. Yeah, that's, that's gifted big, it back to him. Yeah, it's a big miss, you know, especially when Craig misses it. You, you wouldn't expect him to miss to, to hand the towel back to him. With a choice of colour set. Um, well, I don't think there's any danger of Craig missing another one. Well, as a whole, he doesn't. He doesn't really miss many pots, you know. I've watched a lot of Craig, and you know, he doesn't miss much at all. To be honest. No, well, every time I've seen him play. Doesn't look like he's going to miss. And he gets on with it as well. Yeah, he's very, very fluent. Yeah, nice player. I'm sure Matt Cook will be kicking himself. Still got to play a decent shot to, you know, the black's not that accessible, you know, because he doesn't go in the bottom left corner. Um, he's still got to go in his last red. Quite good. He's not a big practicer, Craig, because I, I obviously I get on him quite, quite well, and uh, he just plays like, I think, a couple of rounds of snooker a week, that's it. Plays what? Just a couple of rounds of snooker a really? week, and Another then, one. you know, he didn't really play, and I think he plays much ball as, as a whole. <coughs> but the thing when you say to people again, we'll, we'll allude back to Chris Mellon, he says he doesn't practice because he has got time, because he's either doing exhibitions or he's playing in tournaments, so his practice yeah. is actually in playing. Yeah, he's still queuing, isn't he? You know, he yeah. might not be, he exactly. might be practicing a lot of eight ball all the time, but... Well, what's he done here with a cue ball here? Wow. Ball in hand. Well, I don't know why he wanted to put the, that, that side on Neil. Yeah, well, it was one of them, really, because he's obviously lucky to go in off in the middle of that angle, but, you know, even if he doesn't go in off, the shot he's going to have in his last red to get on the eight ball is going to be quite tricky, really. Well, he's looking a little bit out of sorts at the moment as he shakes his head. And he can't say he's not had his chances. No, no, and, and the thing is with... Uh, these matches, you know, whoever you're playing, um, ultimately it's first to seven, so you, you can't be gifting that many frames away because you've not actually got that much that long in the match. He's okay, just not nearly, <laughs> nearly that. He didn't want to nuke himself on all six yellows. I, I just looked at you then and I thought, surely he's not just stuck himself to the back. It's like, does, does nobody want this frame? I think he's probably one of them, though, Tony, as well. That you know, they're probably just getting used to the table and the pace and the reactiveness. This way you come in and say that they're just testing each other out, <laughs> which is nonsense. <laughs> A bit of early jitters, maybe. Start of the week. Yeah, I think I think even you know Craig's one of the best on the tour, and um, you know even even when you know you are one of the best you still want to get that first frame on the board and you know get yourself going really into, and I, f I think regardless of whoever you are you don't want to be going too free all day in the match how you've been playing you've been playing good but it's a miss really um i've, I've changed my queue uh, i've had my queue a year now which obviously seems like a long time but i haven't had a queue for like 12 years so I, I, big miss that is um so yeah i changed my queue so um yeah, I'm still kind of getting used to it now, but I'm feeling much better with it now than what, I, what, I, what I've ever done with it. So, yeah, and I've been, I've been practicing as well, so we'll see how we go the weekend. Well, this has been an extraordinary frame of professional pool. As Waddingham ties up the match at one each, and that's t I think there's two Craig. chuckaways each, I think, in that frame. Yeah, that was, for, that was Craig's third opportunity to win the frame, yeah. Very, I mean... 
did he have to hit it at, the, at that pace? I know, I know he didn't quite have the angle, but then maybe the nightmare was born from the shot previously, where he threw back too far. Is it that break terrible, really? He's come quite right across it. He did, absolutely. That's why he had so much spin on the cue ball as well. It was almost as if when he broke him, he was scared of going in off, and he sort of he, he lifted it, didn't he, a little bit before he struck. If the red doesn't go past the yellow, though, first shot, which I think he probably does. Big shot. Big shot, yeah. And it's all about just taking it to 15 seconds to play the shot now. Absolutely. So he's not going to address the ball until it gets to five. But he's got to make sure he doesn't go into. Overhit it. I think the writing is on the wall though for Craig Waddingham. There's another 15 seconds coming off this clock. He just needs to roll the red to the yellow here. He has to. Just make it as awkward as possible if he's going to leave the table. Leave Craig at top. He's even played, tried to play snooker. He can get through, but I don't know if he's got seen enough to pot that. What a great shot from Waddingham. Great shot. I think he'd be wish he was knocking him in like that earlier. Might be in a, looking at a whole different match. Well, he's got the one problem yellow at the bottom of the table, just beneath the black, next to the red. So he might, he might got an angle the, here. Play the, he might play the yellow off the red. Oh, he's, now he's going into it, isn't he? He's, he's not guaranteed to land on anything. I think it's a, the time is of the effort, essence, and he's, he's, he hasn't got time to walk around the table and have a look. He's also on the 15 seconds of shot, and it's, I think that's just um, that's done for him there. We went to try double in the middle. Yeah, I think that, I think that's it. I think. Been a frustrating day. Even if he just pots the first two reds now, the, you know, the red at the bottom, then you have a red at the bottom, that's first 30 seconds gone. Yes, it's just finishing off the match now for Matt Cook. He'll be delighted though with his win. Yeah, he'll be over the moon, like I say. I, you know, he, 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 he'd have been going into the match as second favourite. You know, Craig would have been a lot of people tips to win the event, to be honest, never mind the match. So, you know, it's a great win for him. Absolutely. Let's have another look at the clock. I think you can relax now. I'm going to try and play it off the yellow. Not giving in Craig Waddingham. Going to be the fastest break if he gets this. Be the fastest break finishing that ever in the history of the game. Yeah. Well, why not give us a spectacle? And to be fair, well, that, that's why I kind of like. I probably, I probably would like like the golden, the golden uh, breaks. Yeah, that you, you would need be. really because you know if that was still in play now, you'd be a nervous Matt Cook. Yeah, there, you though. would. <laughs> <laughs> the balls aren't going to stop rolling surely in ten seconds. Look at the split. My God, <laughs> I went <wasn't> far wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. He laughs it off, but it's Matt Cook who goes through to the next round. Here we go then. Our first match of three tonight here on the main feature table in Ali to get us underway. Brace to seven, 50 minutes on that match clock and he is straight in off so it will be Declan Brennan with the first opportunity and it's a very very good one as well Simon Webb and Tony Holgate with you on commentary for this one Tony I was out in the arena with Gareth giving this one the build up no doubt that, that Declan starts favourite but you know won't surprise us at all to see Ian play very very well because he's had a good start out there today already with one match under his belt yeah well he's had a bit of practice isn't he uh, a very tight game against Jimmy Carney 7-6 Declan Brennan, well he's had a tremendous year really, I mean he won the world title with the Irish team, the Northern Irish team, um, 
he's a player that's really impressed me this, this season that I've seen from Declan Brennan. Real tough opponent to play against. Yeah, I've got. I've just got this feeling. I spend a lot of time with players doing Station different court. bits of content and obviously analyse their games a lot. De the sky's the limit for Declan Brennan. He, his ceiling is as high as it gets. I think he's got an opportunity here to really rise up through the rankings, get himself back into that kind of top eight, top four kind of world. That's where he feels like he belongs and I almost feel like that's where his game belongs. But he, he's had a tough run with Ultimate over the last 18 months or so. Yeah, he's been a bit up and down here and there, like you say, but he's definitely a top five player. If, if he's on his game, he's, he's really, really good. He has it all. He can pop. He's got the know-how. Uh, he can handle any pressure situation. And he just seems to... He's quite, when, he, when he's really on, he's just so smooth. I mean, that, that ball up the rail there, just... I mean, it wasn't as he tentatively dribbled it up there. I mean, he, he just put it in with a plum. Yeah, really, he's really well. Such a clean potter, his cue ball control, and his, he's a brilliant player. The match we referenced out in the arena with Tom Cousins, the World Masters final, was just breathtaking the level they both played at. And what was amazing, the pockets weren't playing generous. We do see it here play generous from time to time. They were playing tight, and he was just hammering them in from everywhere. Didn't miss a pot in the whole match. It, it really was an amazing spectacle, and the le level he delivered was amazing. And well, that's as big a commentator's curse as we'll see all weekend long. That is a major surprise. Well, you just can't believe it. <laughs> it always seems to happen, doesn't it? I mean, you see whether that frame's dead and buried. I mean, Ian Alley could probably not hardly believe he's back at the table. And it's actually a really good chance for Ian to counter clear because that red is not blocking the pocket at all. Ian can bump it out the way here and should be wide open to counter. Yeah, attacking it early. The right thing to do, he's played it very well. And he's in prime position. And just when you thought Declan Brennan was going to start off with the perfect finish, it's now looking like Ian Alley is going to draw first blood. In some ways, it's a more perfect start than making a ball off the break yourself and making the clearance, because you've given, or Declan's given himself, plenty to think about with that, well, very surprising miss. No, yeah, if Ali clears up here, it's his break next as well. He could no, he went in off on this break. Oh, of course he did yeah. as well, yeah. yeah My mistake. Been. Oh, wow. Wow. Early misses for both, and both of them very comfortable parts. I mean, OK, that one was slightly off the cushion, which would have irritated him, but never for a million years thought he could miss this. I mean, he's not even that close to the cushion. Wow. <laughs> Nearly as bad as me getting the break wrong. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> oh. Is it going to slide it? Wow, that used it all. Well, that was quite a well, generous pocket. <laughs> you know, it's been an interesting frame when I've used wow like four times. And it has been a very intriguing opening frame. A very relieved Declan Brennan gets it on the board. Where you're playing first seven here, if the brakes don't go through early doors at, at, at this level, you and I both know you can be 5-0 down within minutes and the, the game is you just watch it pass you by. In a big long money game, even if you're 6 or 7 nil down, first of 30, OK, you've got another, probably another 5, 6 hours to claw it back. But not here at the ultimate pool. Yeah, it's a 50-minute it, match and that's your lot. It is very short in terms of pool terms. I know we see a lot of races to four on Monday night shows and all that sort of stuff, but you know, in terms of top-level pool, races to... Races to seven, 50 minutes. It is a short match. And a dry break from yellow Declan allows Ian in here. As long as that yellow still goes to the bottom left, he should be OK. Although he may not have a next pot. We should see, the, see now if the yellow's stuck to the red. And, and if the red's too far across it, it won't go into that corner. So he must be on the bottom one then. Yeah, he is. Well, I think he's satisfied it goes because he's played to to get on it he's not played to be on anything else I mean he, he could drop the one in the centre now and just play, come down the rail if he, if he doesn't like this angle well it has to go you, would, you just wouldn't be taking the balls in this order if that didn't pass the red into the corner so we could have a quick reply from Ian Alley
maybe he doesn't go. He's confusing me now because he looks like he's played to get an angle to move it out. What's a great shot. Well. Yeah, very, very good. I guess it's one of those, if he didn't know, sometimes you're not 100% are you either way, and you might as well just make sure by giving it that nudge. Well, it's a very skilled shot he's played there just to flick that ball apart. Not only that, after the yellow, he's missed in the first frame to play that shot and to pull out this finish. It's pretty, pretty remarkable, really, because at least it shows he's not stuck in his head. He's going to mind his work on the eight ball. Make sure he nips it. Which he did very well indeed. Tidy excellent. finish, very tidy finish for me and Ali. Yeah, excellent response. It really was. Dry break from Declan, punished by Ian Ali. Matches turned around out there. By the end of play today, we will know our last 32 lineup, which we will see tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow, in fact, all the way down to a conclusion final tomorrow night. Ball. Sort of come across the, the cue ball with his, as he broke there with, with the tip. You see, he sort of slid to the side, didn't get the greatest contact. Just re evaluating the situation. with the previous shot. Now he's going to try and bump this other yellow out. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I mentioned how good Declan was in that final in Morocco. He certainly hasn't started that level here, even though he has made that good finish in the previous frame. A couple of poor misses early. Chris pop there from Ian Alley. He does have an angle on the red at the top of the table if he wants to try and kick out the awkward red that's situated between the two yellows on the left hand side. He's got it out but He's not landed great, that's for sure. There really was just no guarantees. Well, you had to land on that ball, really, the way, yeah. the way you come into it. And it was pretty low percentage. I guess the hope would have been landed in the middle of the table and he's got a chance for corner and middle, but it's come a little bit too close to the eight ball. And, oh, maybe he can clip this one at the bottom in. got away with this in fact I'm sure he has but Declan should be able to take control of the frame we could just roll this one over to the middle and leave in Ali Snooker that's what he's just checking that he doesn't leave him on the ready he wants to pop this other yellow over the over the other side of the middle bag let's let him see it I don't think that was the intention Okay, he's not the yellows in a great position, but he didn't want him to see it. But then he can't do an awful lot with it. Yeah, how much of it can he see? If he can see almost four ball, he might be able to manufacture a double. Oh, he's, he's coming off a cushion. This is tough to judge. Oh, brilliant from Ian. He's That's been very good. unlucky there. That is, that is so unlucky from Ian Alley. Had to get so close to the jaw here. You're nearly hitting the knuckle there, aren't you? I mean, it's millimetres. 
This might squeeze in off the yellow. Oh, just direct. Brilliant. Ian Alley, back to back. Well, this is a science fiction pull. This is straight from another planet. Oh, what an out this is going to be. Incredible. Huge moment in this match. Brilliant finish from Ian Alley. And that will get Declan's head shaking just a little bit. He would have expected to come back to the table with a chance to go too clear. It's not, it's all square. With it all to do. 6 3 behind against Ian Alley. He's still not getting that cue ball. It's a little fortunate to keep it on the cue ball on the table this time. He came right across this one. His break's not been the greatest today, Simon. It's the worst I've seen his break be since he's made the change to this break. He's just not got it at all. Do you think he needs to go back to his old break? I think he just, I don't think he's queuing. I don't think he's playing his, you know, I think the break will improve once he really starts to feel rhythm on the queuing. We've seen that with a couple of missed pots as well. I think he's been breaking so well for so long. I don't think he'll... he'll be too disheartened by a few breaks that have gone against him, but he would love to find some rhythm out there. Of course, it may well be Pro Series 8 that we're talking about and not Pro Series 7, because you say he's in a spot of bother here. Although this frame itself, he's actually all go. It's not as bad a layout as I first thought it was. Slightly loose there, but he's got the yellow into the right hand centre. off that one didn't it point to the center it's played that very well to keep that cue ball there better shot than it looked yeah, it's made to look that easy that was not an easy shot at all you got to drag the cue ball to kill it as it hits the ball brilliant shot with side there as well did he need to finish underneath the yellow there or was he accepting a double, or is there more room for that equal than it looks? It slid off the rail. And that could well be Declan's last shot in this match, although it's far from an easy counter clearance. But Ian has control of the frame. What happened there, he'd have liked to have been a little bit straighter then. He's had to sort of force the angle and he skidded it into the cushion and missed that black. But is it? That red looks quite pretty awkward on the left hand side of the table, Simon. I don't think you can just get behind that one and drop it in the middle. I think that's got to go down the rail. Yeah, see from the overhead there, it's got to come down the table. It doesn't have to go, of course. I'm not sure the benefit of, of not going unless he feels he can get a really good snooker. Mm. Ian Alley's put plenty out of snookers in one frame well, when back to back. He's going up in the top corner. Played that shot very well. Declan Brennan now wondering if he's going to get back to the table. Pot from Ali. Now then, all about position. He, just like wants, he, he wants to be right behind this. Just roll it down and you've got the simple black into the middle. It looks like he's got a shade too much angle to me. Really thin, you've got to play this. He's done very well. That was as good as you could play that. You'd like to be really straight behind it, but I mean, that you'll take that because that, that could have gone wrong. That's in. 
Simple eight ball then for the match. Very good from Ian Alley. Great counter clearance. Couple of surprising mistakes in the match from Declan Brennan. He's going to have to dust himself off and come back for Pro Series 8. But Ian Alley gets himself into the last 32 of Pro Series 7. Join us again in a couple of minutes. I'm going to jump out to the arena and get a few words with Ian. Also, Tom Cousins, he's on the way. Tom Cousins, provisionally number one, winner of three events this season. Matt Brearley, newly promoted player, some 81 places lower down. Yet to make it past this round of 64. So if he's going to do that, he's going to have to get past currently the best player on the planet. Yeah, and I was saying in the interview I did pre session that we did a little preview on this game and they asked me about it. And I said that Matt Breeley. She played unbelievably well against me in a tournament. Actually beat me and the finishes he was taking out. To be honest, I didn't think he quite had that in the locker. And I said that if he plays like that, he is definitely capable of beating anybody. But that break was very poor. As a player, when you scratch straight and off into the middle, like he did there, directly in, no kicks, no cannons, no bumps, stunned straight and off in the middle. That is a very poor shot, especially from the angle he put the cue ball. So he will be very disappointed with that start. And well, the layout is left here on the Reds. <coughs> I'm thinking about a minute's time. They're going to be racking the balls up because I don't think Tom misses these. Played really well last season to get promoted. But I guess with all the players are in the lower part of the rankings it's just the question of consistency they can be amazing one day but can't deliver quite the same every day He's certainly a very capable player no one's taking him for granted Tom just frowned a little bit there wanting to take that one away from the eight ball as soon as possible the previous shot wanted to stop the cue ball dead and basically stunned it back three inches he has been in China. He openly said that he's been a little bit nervous to see how he's going to play, how he's going to adapt to the physics of the balls, etc. And that was one that definitely called him out. Because he came back too far, it meant that he left too much angle on the one in the middle, which meant that he had to bump the eight ball into a half guarded position, you'd have to say. Because he is going to leave this red on the right hand side of the table to his last ball and if he comes high on it and he is high on it position to the eight ball isn't easy the worry with that shot of course was under hitting it and snookering yourself but with how much angle he had I don't think that was possible Played it nice, just grazed past the yellow on the way through, which widened the angle. He will drop this in the middle. He's just second guessing whether the cue ball, and he may have changed. No, he is playing it in the corner. This is tougher. Made it look easy. Yeah, it's just such a good case for shots like that. Most people are never wanting to leave that ball in the middle. It was a good old pen and piece of paper on a scoreboard that you used to write the score down and they would update it to the website every four or five frames and great to see him back involved and he's a top guy and glad to see that he's fitting well yeah back in those days the, the live scoring was Mike really wasn't it just walking around the room getting those scores I was just chatting with him before this he's, he's back working at this event as you say lovely to see him here he's been a stalwart of the game for so long He's working on some of the challenger events across the weekend. Hit the brake nice again. Nice and flush. A bit of air time on the cue ball, which meant that he slightly come over it. What I mean by come over it is fractionally hit down on the cue ball which means that he hits the front ball on the hop. 
Yeah, it's not normally one for queuing down quite so much as some of the guys. It's going to be perfectly happy with the result. It's just so frustrating when your mat's sitting in the chair, you just want a chance, and then your opponent's breaking like this. Just knows he's not going to get back to the table. These early round matches are going to be quite important in a way for Tom because he's obviously been focused on his Chinese eight ball game for the last few weeks, so he can't have put in much practice. I don't know how much he's done since he got back, but he's going to have played loads of tournaments, so getting off to a good start is pretty valuable to him. And with no disrespect to Matt, this obviously isn't a bad draw for Tom. In some of these early round matches, you can get unseeded players who are a real threat. Matt definitely is a potential threat, but he's not odds on to win the match, so it allows Tom to kind of relax into it. Those two events that he won back to back back in March, he was just timing the ball so well. He just looked to, looked to me like he'd been practicing a lot because he was just playing a lot of very sort of slow screw shots, just had to constantly be in perfect control. Yeah, very much looks like he. Always playing within himself, isn't he? It almost just looks like he's strolling around his front room. He's got this casual demeanour. We quite often joke about this. Just puts the chalk down on the table. Doesn't really look like he's playing a match. It's just looks like he's practising. He'll be happy with that shot. Of course, happy with the result. But he'll be even more happy that he controlled the screw of that because get into that too much and on this table it is a fraction too much you can head towards the two reds don't get into it and off the cue ball can head over towards the right center and wow that's a slightly lucky kick there the cue ball tracking up towards the top left corner it's knocked back into the middle of the table um, move to his hand on the table which maybe compacts it in a little bit but very restricted on power because of course you can only take the cue back as far as the bridge hand before it falls off like a golf swing to generate power you have to pull the cue back you have to pull the golf club back as far as you can same with the pool and you want to generate a lot of power to the break of course you have to have a bigger backswing when you break off the hand you can only take it back to the thumb you're restricted on how much power you can generate. I suppose he feels as though the balance on this table of power and control is off the hand. And you can't argue with it. He made a ball, but what I will say is he made a ball, but the Reds were a little bit awkward. You never get a God-given right to have an easy finish, of course, when you make a ball. But when you make one, you do hope and pray to have something easy to go at and then Reds definitely weren't easy especially at 6-0 behind yeah you've got to feel a bit for Matt it would have been nice to see him at least get a frame on the board it felt like it was perhaps always going to be a bridge too far to win the match but it's just such a disappointing start to what's going to be a four day weekend in terms of the stay but it's going to feel a lot shorter than that it's not going to be playing again until Saturday so he's going to have a full day off tomorrow difficult as well when you're losing the early rounds because there's so many people in play there's going to be over 400 people playing around the venue this weekend it's not like you can just go out there and grab a practice table everything's in use yeah good point there's no practice tables once the event starts so like you say whenever it is that he plays saturday unless he goes out and obviously finds one of the local clubs where obviously the conditions are very different i know it's at least hitting balls but yeah, Tom actually hit the wrong ball there. He was playing to the yellow on the top cushion and snicked the other one the way through, bumped his ball to the cushion and the other one to the cushion. I know he get left a lot there, but it's just sort of always felt like he's just chasing this match a bit. Just had that one glorious chance where he was in prime position which he let go the rest of it has always felt like low percentage finishes he's been going looking for 
Quite a sort of relaxed demeanour around the table. Tom's just walking around slowly, but just feels like he's in real control of his game in a way that Matt unfortunately hasn't been able to settle into so far. One more match to come after this, but that's obviously the end of the night's work for Tom. He'll be done and coming back tomorrow. Assuming he completes this seemingly inevitable victory. It's not been quite as long a day today. For the subsequent days of the tournament will be starting pretty much first thing and playing the whole way through the day. We've got the number one seed in action in this match, we've got the number well, number one ranked player in the, the professional rankings, I should say. We've got the number two ranked player, Stevie Dempsey, up next. The fact that Tom's had such a ridiculous season has kind of overshadowed Stevie, but absent that, Stevie's had an amazing season. Two runners-up spots, both two Tom Cousins, and also a win last time out in Blackpool. A bit to do at the bottom of the table. The left-hand pocket slightly out of action. Balls covering each other a bit to the right-hand pocket. You could see him finding a way through these. It's just a case of keeping tight control of the cue ball. You'd obviously like to get it wrapped up here. I'm not sure if somebody that cares that much about the, the score line, but nonetheless doesn't hurt when you're playing shots like that, does it? What a fantastic development shot he's just played there. Oh, what a shot. What an outcome. Loads and rakes and lashings of bottom left-hand side. Cue ball bites into the side cushion and then zips down. And Well, it couldn't have gone any better because he kicked his bad ball away. But the, the biggest Brucey bonus of all that was the yellow that you suggested that was tied up on the bottom rail that didn't pot into this left corner because of the red. The cue ball spun off the cushion and bumped that over an inch, and that now does go. So that will be his last ball. It does pass that red into this bottom left corner. So, just a case of joining up these final dots. Ball down the right hand side rail, ball to the bottom left. And he will drag this. Bottom left hand side, you see the drag shot is hitting low on the white, which allows you to put a firmer strike on it while killing the pace. Much easier way to play it and keeps the cue ball on line. Well, this has been some performance from Tom Cousins. He has had a bit of help from his opponent. It wasn't to be for Matt Brearley tonight. Offers a warm congratulations, he's a good sport as always, but he's going to have to take the day off tomorrow, go and regroup. A tough match here on paper in prospect here for Brian Halcrow, but this is a Brian Halcrow on a return to form, no doubt about it. Very good win earlier on, good run at the Players' Championship as well, and he's feeling as good as he ever has done for Ultimate Pool, but he is up against one of the best players in the world this year, Stevie Dempsey has been flying and will be a favourite for this match quite rightly. Joining me on commentary for this one, Sean Story. Sean, great to have you here on comms. Obviously, it didn't go your way this afternoon, but it means we get to spend a bit of time with you in the commentary box. Yeah, I guess I'll do some comms tomorrow, <laughs> but um, Craig played well, honest Craig Lankin. Um, and yeah, I think he potted off every break. But I'd, I'd probably had enough chances to at least be level, and I lost 7-3, so there you go. But that was a lovely break from Brian, to be fair. I always think when it's a when you've got a big favourite in a match and as much as you can do in these tournaments because everybody can beat anybody and Brian's near the bottom of the rankings obviously Stevie right at the top but you feel like the, the player the underdog if you like Brian he does need to get off to a good start here and enforce himself onto this match yeah and not a great layout I think you pull back here <coughs> try and find a good safety I'm not sure I'd be moving this one up here right now but yeah he's sort of um Has he left the loss of turn? Not sure what Stevie can do here, but you always want to see who's got the most balls on the table, if you like. So Stevie having six reds, and he can probably play a loss of turn here. The eight balls tied up, so 
make Stevie favourite from here if he can play this and maybe leave Brian Wilded to that yellow. No, he couldn't do that, but he just uh, got it out of the way. Wilded well, him to the other yellow. That's what he tried. I think this does go in the right centre, but again, Brian's kind of forced to go now, and it's not a very attractive looking table. Stevie's definitely got a big advantage from here. I think if I was Brian, I'd be trying to glance off this yellow he's closest to and play the loss of turn on Stevie's red in the uh, top right corner of the table. Looks like that might be what he's trying. Yeah, a bit jabby. So he's going to pull back Stevie at the table for the first time. What a year he is having, just continuing to impress. So solid now, Stevie. I mean, he's always been a great player, but he's, he's elevated himself for sure. And uh, like you said on the uh, at the end of the last show, to introduce the match, he would be number one if it wasn't for Tom winning six tournaments. Yeah, they are, they are numbers one and two in the provisional rankings. It's very close still, considering Tom's won <laughs> six events. I know one of them, or two of them, to be fair, were non-ranking. One of the last man standing and the, the uh, champion of champions were non-ranking events. But he's won four ranking titles. And still Stevie's right on his tail. But I suppose Stevie's won three in that in that two-year period. The rankings run four. He won two last year and won this year, so... Yeah, but this year alone, he's also he's had a runner-up finish at the Champions League, and then two runner-up finishes at the Pro Series to Tom Cousins, and of course winning at the the Pro Series. So the ranking points on on this year alone has been absolutely flying for for Stevie. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal standard he's playing to. Chris Melling's also in the mix when it comes to the top two. He's very, very close to to Stevie Dempsey in the rankings, and the three of them have separated themselves from from everybody else. Yeah, Stevie tried a quite an ambitious shot though. He had to really force an angle. He has developed his red, but he's, he didn't catch it quite as he wanted. He's tied two up at the same time, so it's hard to develop this one in the bottom right. I imagine he might screw up to the top cushion and then use the one over the pocket two rails to get back into this. Now I think he's sort of forced to go. He's going to play a double. Can't tell from this camera angle if the double goes, but it obviously does. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's much room at all. Yeah, the eight ball looks like it's in the way. It definitely goes past the yellow, but obviously from his view, he's confident. They do square up on these. You have to play this soft, I think. Near draw. Near draw is what we expected. Yeah, tried to allow it to slide, but not enough. So Brian comes back to the table. Much better chance now to win the frame. And eight ball, the only one that needs a bit of attention. Everything else goes comfy here. Yeah, I think I'll be playing the yellow to the right middle here, trying to leave himself dead straight on that one to the close to the bottom right corner pocket and just deep screw towards the red and the eight ball. You should pop them out and you should be on both yellows as well. I don't know how he'll see it. The eight ball does of course double if he doesn't want to disturb it. It's quite a nice double and he's got a, the yellow near it to land perfect. So yeah, I think he's maybe going to play the double if he gets that far. Has got the angle now to move the eight ball as well off the one closest to the bottom right corner pocket. Another option. Might might be forced into. He's looking at the one to the left corner, but that looks like it might hit the eight ball quite high. It doesn't look like it'll necessarily get it, get it out here. He'll catch the top half of the eight ball as we look. Yeah, it didn't come out. Actually knocked it worse. Yeah, now the double's tougher. He didn't need to play that shot. <coughs> It's one of those catch 22. If you play it softer, you catch shape ball more full, but you don't move it. So I think that was just not a natural angle. I don't know if you didn't pick up on that, but it always looked like that that was going to be the outcome to me, whatever pace he played it at. So this tells me he's going to go into these. It's one where you can easily miss the eight ball high and end up near the middle pocket. You want to catch the the gap between the red and the eight ball ideally but very very easy to to miss miss the eight ball high it's perfect that's a great shot not great reward reward though it's tricky still a little bit pacey for me but he hit the it's better to hit it like that than than try and get too clever and miss the cannon altogether he absolutely nailed where you want to hit the cannon so it's still a pretty presentable chance the red's blocking the eight the in off in the right middle so just play this confidently 
confidently yep. put away. Very good from Brian Halcro. They'll both be the first to admit they were probably the fifth and sixth favourites for that group. Brilliant it's great, performance. It's great that... Um, I do find the format is brutal, though, the, the, the fact that the yeah. second group is just a complete restart and it's kind of you do all your work in the first group and then you've, you're eff effectively relying on three 30-minute three matches, race to six to try and, yeah, it does seem a bit of a harsh one. I think I definitely preferred the format last year where you played a proper semi-final and final. Yeah, players like like Brian that were able to build through the tournament got the benefit from it, and then the likes of yourself and, and Declan Brennan had the the rough end of that that format. Well, dry break from Stevie means it's an opportunity for Brian once again, and a little bit fiddly once again as well. He's completely mishit that. But um, you can hold back. Have another little tactical battle. Maybe bump this red up and down, and leave the white in the top left corner of the table, something like that. Maybe he's going, does this go top left? It does go, there's the cue ball. Don't want to be there. No, not what Brian wanted. Cube on hand for Stevie. He's obviously got to deal with the cluster himself now. He's got the cue ball in hand to be able to do just that. Bit of a strange shot from shot choice from Brian there. I don't know where he was trying to get to with the cue ball, but obviously he couldn't he couldn't see all of the all of the, the white where he was striking there. So it's a little soft can on that red above the yellow here. Don't want to tie the eight ball up. Lovely shot. Yeah, pace on that was beautiful, wasn't it? If he knocks it one more turn further, he's got to deal with the eight ball. Now it's still nice and clean. That's what you notice with the top top players. They just have that. that the cannons are just so controlled. I know this is this is a simple example from ball in hand, but you see so often they're cannoning balls in a very specific way or in, in a way where good things can happen. Or understanding when it's time not to, you know, when you have to go in with more force. And yeah, it's a big part of the game. It always feels like there's something to do. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of leaving the one bottom left the last, which is what I think he's thinking here, that, that yellow nearest the eight ball will be his ball to get on the eight ball, but that red he cannoned earlier is kind of meaning he has to get a very good angle on it. If he ends up too thin, the red becomes a blocker. The last two years, whether he takes the one in the middle of the table last or the one top right last, you know, second to last, if you like, both of them should give him a good, a good natural angle to just uh, stun the cue ball up towards the left middle for his, for the eight ball last. But um, yeah, it's not not exactly where he wanted to be there. But if you do sort of play the one top right, he's not great on either ball here. Have to play this next shot with a bit of pace. He wants to screw back towards the middle pocket but because that that red's leaving him bridging. It's very Take easy to under or over hit this, and he hasn't got a huge mod. He does need to be quite close to that right centre pocket after this shot. Yeah, very nice. He's just got to. It's just come slightly past where he wanted. Ideal, ideally. So just a little soft screw here. So I say leaving this one till last. It's just got to land pretty nice. Well, I think he'll be fine now. Done the hard work. Yeah, that's fine. So track somewhere up between these two reds that are closest to the left hand side of the table. Somewhere in between those two. All very nicely worked out here for Stevie Dempsey. Drop this in dead weight, let the pocket suck it in, even if you don't middle it. Oh, he hit that a bit firm. Yeah. The cushion, a lot of the cushion there. And it still sucked it in. Wow. A very good though for Stevie. Nice worked out finish.
big event for us all to look forward to coming up in December, December the 16th, Clash of the Titans at the Brentwood Centre. Tickets are available on the Ultimate Ball shop and they're selling out very fast indeed. If you want to come, then go and get yourself some tickets. Oh, complete miss hit on the break <laughs> from Brian there and it's come out lovely. Wow, the miss hit break always nice works. For you. Look at this, this hits below the centre pocket, it's like a front ball cut break. Amazing, stays below the middle as well coming back across. He just obviously queued a lot of left-hand side on that. But uh, what a chance. Had Brian uh, won the last frame, which he obviously had a great chance to, then this would be for 3-0. That's that look there, the fine margins in pool, really. He has to forget about what happened in the previous frame and just focus on the clearance here, and it's a good layout for that. Great chance to put in a break clearance. Probably a little bit carefully if he's playing the one top left. I actually like the one to the right corner. If he lands dead straight on this next ball, it's going to be a bit tricky. And it's kind of easy to land straight. I'm not sure if he can punch out now. Or even punch through. That might be worse than straight where he is. So it's a bit of pace. Should be okay. If he plays the one top right there, it's just a lot easier and tops through. He'd be on this from the other side. He's fine. So I don't think the red closest to the middle of the table goes to the bottom left. So it just needs getting on. You want to be somewhere below the right middle to play it in the left middle. This shot. So just drift down. He's pretty perfect. So almost as if you're dead straight on both balls. That's where you want the cue ball just below that right middle pocket. He's using the cushion, I think. He's screwing straight back. Now he is short here. I'm pretty sure the red goes bottom left, but I'm not sure how much of the pocket is blocked by that yellow, if any. It's just decelerated on that slightly. Well, I think he's still fine. Just avoid the in off. He's trying to screw this, so must have the whole pocket to aim at. So we just top it in. That's fine. Yeah, he's got loads of angle on this, but he's got all the room in the world to land on the eight ball. Yeah, fine, perfect. Definitely looks a lot more confident around the table than I've seen since he kind of since Old Ball started anyway. Yeah, it's been a big difference. Yeah, it's not just results really; it's how he is around the table. And it's one thing to just turn up feeling confident, but I think he really is starting to feel it out there in these match, these matches. Had one nil up on Phil Harrison, and Chris Melling is flying along four nil in his match with Paul Clack on table two. Wow, another one absolutely creamed those, but I think he might have to play a cannon this time, but. What a split that is. It's fair to say his break is warming up. Hmm. Does he have to play a cannon or not? He can obviously land short position. He, may, he probably does have the natural angle to, to get over there towards the right. Where the cushion meets the bulk line on the right hand side would do him. Somewhere around there. Yeah, nicely controlled. And now it's quite the ideal angle. Yeah, one more shot to get in the middle of the table and he's all good. I think he's just got to leave a red to bottom right next. Not sure if he can do much more than that. Oh, he did force it out. That's even better. A little bit straighter than I thought he was. I thought he had to just punch down the line there, but... Yeah, these are done. Nothing to do. Three stun shots. <laughs> I 
Just making sure he <laughs> flies in. What is he looking at? <laughs> oh, dear Stevie. Yeah, it's all going his way now. Two excellent breaks back to back. Clears them both up. Hines almost feel like he's missed the boat in this match. It will feel a long way back for him. He will have the next break. He needs to find something to try and turn this one around because Stevie is one away. The only good news for Brian is loads of times in the time left in the match, but you've pretty much got to stop Stevie getting any more chances. Yeah, I mean, this needs a big turnaround. Brian's got to cut out, cut out the mistakes, and like I say, he's got to stop Stevie getting a getting a chance. And Stevie's last two breaks have just been well, a bit a bit disheartening really for Brian. And they've just they've just come out lovely. Same again, left hand side of the cue ball. Does he make a ball this time? No, Stevie's got to do some work. Do well to finish these. I'm not sure he will even go for the finish. Just a few too many problems to deal with. If you, got, if you, if you want to go, you have to go reds. Problem in the top right, problem by the left middle, problem with the eight ball in the bottom left corner and the red, and then the other two are a plant, but yeah. He's going to try and go yellow, does he? Cut this one in, that's what he's looking at. Very thin, no. But, oh, off the, off the yellow in the middle, that opens up one problem. Yeah, try to open everything up, that's gone very, very wrong. Yeah, it might not be a quick run to the line all of a sudden for Stevie. There's some mileage in this one. Just going to just play a little soft safety up this top corner, just gently skim off the red and leave Brian close to the yellow, I think. Doesn't want to leave it touching, so he's avoiding that, because obviously Brian would play the loss of turn, so he's just avoiding that even being a possibility, trying to jam him in. Yeah, interesting, isn't it, that I think a huge percentage of players would play the exact shot you were talking about originally, but... There was always the potential for that loss of turn, which would have worked against Stevie. His knee knows his four frames in front. This frame could take 10 minutes, so um, it's that whole Brian's got to go, Stevie doesn't, and he knows exactly how to play the match and the, the time situation, the clock. He's just got it all nailed on, so it's the right move to... Um, and I don't know if Brian has, to be honest, because he needs to be aggressive here. He does not want this frame taken he wants to this frame to be done before that 15 second shot clock kicks in so it's a, it's a tough balance to find for Brian isn't it because he has to win the frame obviously but can't allow the frame to drift on for 10 minutes Stevie will just keep tying things up so Brian's got to force something he's got to dangle the carrot for Stevie to uh, go this is a little risky oh what a layout we have now Stevie's just a master of this to be fair when you watch him he's so good tactically He's just playing this frame perfectly. Brian's going to be tied up. In, well, he's already tied up in knots, but uh, you watch the clock will run down now. There'll probably be five minutes left by the time this frame finishes. Steve is just going to keep it tight, and Brian's probably not going to necessarily realise he just needs to be hyper-aggressive now. There's no point tippy-tapping it for ten minutes. It won't leave him time to, to win the match. You're almost digging your own, digging your own bed here to... <laughs> Put yourself out of Pro Series Seven if you don't if you don't make something happen. I'm not sure if you saw it at all, Sean, but obviously talked about it a fair bit. Brian, he obviously had a nice memento for his fastest ever six red shootout, 15:09, which he was awarded at the Pro at the Players Championship a couple of weeks ago. On that same weekend, he set the record for the longest ever frame of pool with Ottawa Pool of 22 <laughs> minutes. Wow. So he's equally the fastest player in Ottawa Pool and the slowest. <laughs> Fantastic. I, mean, I like that they, they got a plaque for that. I mean, that, that may never be beaten, that six would shoot out. So. Yeah, I think it will take some a unique circumstance to be beaten. Yeah, I mean, his was, wasn't it? Two, two in, nearly potted three off the break. That's just incredible if anyone's seen it. It was, uh, it's only because a ball, a ball came across the cue ball. He could have been a good couple of seconds quicker as well. I mean, yeah, he only pot four <laughs> balls. 
yeah, he was uh, unfortunate not to be able to make it quicker, but 15.09 is still very, very quick. Now, Brian, can he see this? Can he have a little pot this yellow and just open everything up? There's only got one problem ball, really. No, he's just being patient. Fair enough. I don't mind the safety here. You can put Stevie in trouble. Yeah, that's a nice shot. This is tough to hit a red here. But even if he <coughs> doesn't hit a red, what does Brian do with ball in hand? So Steve will be playing this in a way where he knows he's not opening anything up. Keep the problems on the table. He's going to try and softly go two cushions, hit the red nearest the eight ball, I think. Or sort of to the right of the eight ball. That's the one he's aiming at. Oh, a little bit of dancing, but it didn't help. Now, does Brian try and find a loss of turn or try and open things up. I like the loss of turn in the top right here. This frame's actually panned out. Stevie's not controlled the frame as well as I thought he might or or Brian has uh, found a way to open the frame up more than I expected to happen. So loss of turn, leave the cue ball near the eight ball. That's what he's playing. Oh no. No, 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 no. He did not want to do that. Brian, that was just twice across jam him in with those yellows in the eight ball and he's left a loss of turn here for Stevie so it's a poor shot I would play the loss of turn with the uh, red yeah this way not not directly with the cue ball that's it just get the red in front of those yellows that's the way to do it Missed opportunity, you feel a little bit for Brian. Gained an advantage by playing his loss of turn, but immediately gave it back. Yeah, when you play the loss of turn, where you put the cue ball is so important, and he just did it. I don't know what he played for. He's trying to put it, look, the cue ball on the bottom cushion, obviously, but just so such a dangerous way to play it, especially ball in hand. He could have literally jammed Stevie right in with those yellows, you know, and eight was quite a natural angle as well, so Stevie wouldn't have had a shot then. But. Yeah, I reckon we're going to be, I said five minutes, we're going to be down to five minutes and still stand by it. I think we'll probably be down to five minutes to go by the time this frame finishes. There's just no incentive at all for Stevie to do anything other than be patient. He's got another loss of turn here. This is quite an easy one. It's the thing Brian's trying to cover pockets that doesn't help you in these rules, so... I mean, yeah. He's just getting slowly strangled. There's not really a lot he can do now either. Stevie has a huge advantage in the frame. Brian's, Brian's missed his opportunity. I don't know if he can softly double this yellow in the middle of the top cushion. Down in that area, it will pot the red. But that kind of opens everything up as well. If he hits the eight ball, the red will go in, I think. But does the eight ball then come out? I don't want to pot this one. Just about in time. But that's not going to help him at all. Well, I guess actually he could roll into this yellow full ball here on the left hand side nearest the eight ball, nearest the cushion. Potentially leave a snooker and open the air up. So, yeah, not, that's probably all he had from there, in all fairness. He's got more chance of being able to go because there's just enough separation down in this bottom corner now. So, if he was to get cue ball in hand or even a, a sight of a pot at the top of the table, there is a way of. Brian being more aggressive. Yeah, Stevie's, Stevie's going to do very well here to stop Brian having to go out a pot. This will be a very good. He might try and double this red back to the to the bottom left area. What should can on the yellow stay up there? Oh, he's gone the other way. Tried the full blooded double that way. It's kind of left it pretty awkward actually. So there are pots available. Well, one pot really the only one available is along the top cushion, but very hard to control the cue ball. Might be another safety here. Yeah, 30 seconds away from the final 10 minutes and 15 seconds a shot. Even if Brian was to win this frame, this frame has hurt him a lot. Play the long double, leave the cue ball where the yellow is. Well, oh, don't put your ball on the cushion. No, that's, all right, that's all right. Probably a loss of turn here from Stevie. Pot the yellow over the left middle. Cue ball will be somewhere near the red that would be effectively the black spot on a snooker table. Two cushions. 
It is a little bit thin, this, but you might as well, might as well have a go at it. You might push the yellow to the cushion, worst case. Oh, no, he's playing off. Oh, he's trying to just land in those two reds nearest the bottom left corner. Just about not a foul. Very good shot. Tied that area back up. And does uh, no shot, really. Very, very clever. Whilst this tactical exchange is going on, I can tell you Chris Manning has completed victory. A very quick 7-1 victory for Chris against Paul Clack. Yeah, and for me, Buzzer should have just got this frame open. That was his best chance, trying to trying to beat Stevie in this kind of frame. When Stevie's not the one that needs to go, he's, uh, he's asking a lot. Stevie has actually lost the advantage in this frame quite a few times and then wrestled it back. The question here is, does Stevie feel like he's worth him going now? It's one cannon for him to play. He's got a wide open chance to do it. Yeah, he probably will. He's still aware that uh, Brian could. It's gone about <laughs> almost as bad as it could have. Can he see the one to the right middle? Nope. Another safety though. No harm in this. He won't move this red very far. This will be a graze. Keep the red in the way. Well, well, what can you do here? Not a lot. That little movement for Stevie though, it may well have just opened up the red enough that if he got a chance he would be able to go. That's a great shot. That is a fantastic shot. I don't think the yellow goes, but that's as good as you could do from there. I mean if the yellow went as well then it would be a bonus. Of course the easiest red for Stevie to hit is that one closest to the cube. Oh, he can hit the one because you can't, to be fair. I don't know here, I don't know, this isn't easy. So that yellow must not go, but he's left a natural angle for Brian to screw into it. Amazing turnaround in this frame. Yeah. That one shot was that was brilliant. What Brian played there to leave the leave the snooker. This is a natural top left punch in, but obviously he needs to use his extension here. Oh wow! Goodness me, what has happened there? That could well be the last shot then for Brian Halcrow. He must not have known he had his extension. Disappointing miss and wide open chance now for Stevie just to wrap things up. I mean that was a natural angle to develop them and he was on the one over the middle. Can't understand how he's not screwed back into them and he didn't use his extension. It's tough out there, especially after a long safety battle. Sometimes when you do get your chance, you're a bit fried. <laughs> yeah, and at 15 seconds a shot, Brian isn't blessed as being one of the quickest players. But... Uh, Quite a nice day at the office for Stevie. He'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, be happy to turn this one around after a slightly slow start, but that was more to do with Brian than it was for Stevie. And Stevie, once he got going, was very good indeed. It was the Stevie Dempsey that's been taking down titles and making finals, and he gets over the line against Brian Halcrow. Sean, thank you for your company.